well, you know, you you think of salvation as in the future, you know, like like it's coming, and that someday, <laughs> if you really keep at it, that salvation will come in the future. And then he's kind of saying, why would God place salvation in the future? And wouldn't God be cruel to do something like that, you know? I mean, wouldn't the, the time that you have to suffer through in between, between the present and the future, make God cruel? Again, it's kind of like the old thing about Jesus dying for sins, you know. What kind of father would that be that would have his son <coughs> have to have, share, shed his innocent blood? You know, it's the same thing with time. Why would God put salvation in the future? And the Course keeps saying, He didn't. <laughs> he put it in the present. <laughs> that all of salvation is, is offered to you this very instant, which is quite a, I mean, it can be a lot of relief, and then the ego will, will jump right in there and go, oh, I should be able to get this, <laughs> you know, I want to get this now, please help me get this, you know, I want it now, you know, but, but basically what Jesus does in the Course, I mean, he goes into, I mean, there's 1,200 pages of saying you're terrified of the Holy Spirit. You're terrified of accepting that answer right now. That's why many a time was born. You know, the, the past and the future are are the mind's attempts to evade and avoid the present. You know, because it's terrified of the Holy Spirit and it's terrified of the life. Now, on a conscious level, you know that can seem like well, it seems kind of funny because. I feel like God's my friend, and the Holy Spirit is my partner in this, and we're working to undo, and now Jesus is telling me that I'm terrified of the Holy Spirit. And it really goes back to that, the only way that this makes any sense, if it, if it can make any sense, is that during that blip, when the tiny mad idea seemed to happen, that the mind believed it actually had usurped heaven. It, it literally that you served God's place in heaven and basically the ego counseled, you know, run. You've done it now. <laughs> run away from that light. You know, that light will get you and will destroy you if you ever come back because you really did it. You pull off, you separated from your father and your father's angry. So this whole world has been an attempt to kind of to run from the light into the darkness, into the fragmentation, into the, the duality of the world to kind of hide from that light. So, the, when we talk about it, we just read a section in there where it talks about no one wants to ask an honest question because he does not, he's afraid to hear the answer. That's what we're trying to get at, is that the Holy Spirit is the answer. Into this darkened mind now that believes that it's separated from God, God placed a spark, a spark of light that is the Holy Spirit and that this light will grow and grow until it literally illuminates that whole mind. But the mind is very afraid of it. And I, for some of you who were here last time, we did use the, the metaphor, I believe, of the World Trade Center. Did I talk about that last time or not? Do you remember that vaguely? Mm -hmm. Where we talked about that the, the ego is a belief in the mind. And then there's this world that was projected out. Now, Jesus says, would God has placed the answer where the problem isn't? You know, would God have placed the answer in the world if the problem is in your mind? And he says, no. <laughs> God placed the answer right where the problem was. <laughs> he, the answer is in our mind. The Holy Spirit and the problem, the belief in separation is in our mind. And this world is a smokescreen that's a just giant distracted device to keep from going down into our mind and questioning all these assumptions and beliefs that we have. So I, I kind of use the analogy of the World Trade Center, that the basement down there is where the Holy Spirit is and where the ego is. And then all of this, all of the layers or the floors of the World Trade Center are like all these beliefs that the mind is so terrified of this light that it's kind of stacked on all these layers of, of dark floors so it can ah, forget about that light. That's what the word dissociation means in the Course, that, that literally the deceived mind has tried to dissociate and just forget about the light, you know, and forget about the everything and just and dissociate. Because another reason why the, the mind is dissociated is because light and darkness don't go together. They're kind of like oil and water, that when one is present, the other is absent. And the mind, um, it, 
it couldn't stand the intolerable condition of holding, here we have the ego thought system, and here's the Holy Spirit. And these are two thought systems that are not reconcilable. So the ego's answer to it is forget about one. Ah, relief. <laughs> ah, oh, relief. You see how, how that was the, that's what dissociation is about, is I can forget about the light. Now I just, I forget about the Holy Spirit. Now I just have the ego thought system here. And it seems to be a little bit of relief, but really it's just buried because the mind is still in pain because it's not in its natural state of condition. In other words, in heaven, the mind is a state of oneness and completion and wholeness. And when there's this split in there, it's very uncomfortable and intolerable. So what the mind did was it projected the split in the mind that we just talked about out of the world, and now all of a sudden the smoke stream became a world of duality. Instead of the duality being these two thought systems in the mind, now the duality is seen in the world. You know, male, female, hot, cold, fast, slow, you know, tall, short. We could go on all night. I mean, the whole world seems to be just extremes of duality. And that's, that's the thing. So now, now it seems to be out on the screen. The mind seems to get some kind of relief because now it believes it's a little teeny figure on the screen. It's forgotten that it's this vast, vast, powerful mind. And it's this little teeny person. And in a sense, it's a little whole person, even though we don't feel very whole sometimes. <laughs> in a sense, that's, that's kind of the trick. And you can see that this is an identity that's been made up that is not our true identity. That our true identity is Christ. But this little bitty identity, we say, well, I was born in such and such a place, and these were my parents, and I grew up, and I've got this life history, and these were my main life events, you know, the, my fourth grade teacher embarrassed me, and I got the first girl I kissed was when I was 13, and, you know, it's got all this stuff made up in the dream world and everything. And this is like a made-up identity. And, and in a sense, it's kind of like a substitute, because the true identity is this magnitude, you know, just this vast spirit that's just so powerful. And in this world, when we identify with this teeny little person that we think we are, it seems very tiny and very limited. And not only that, but it seems like there's this gigantic world around this teeny little person where these people seem to be competing against it all the time. You're competing for jobs, competing for love, competing for resources. There's hurricanes and there's tornadoes and there's things that's got to constantly defend and protect and watch out. And really it's just a dream that's going on. The, the problem is that it's identified with this little teeny speck of flesh instead of this vast, vast light, which is its reality. So that kind of gives you an idea that, that as we go through life and we seem to be confronted with issues, um, all of the issues that seem to be out yeah. on the screen and all the problems that we seem to face, you know, financial problems, relationship problems, health problems, we could go on and on and on about problems, but they all seem to be out here on the screen. And all the Course is saying is you just have one problem, it's down in the basement, <laughs> and you have one solution, thank heaven to your one problem, and it's down in the basement, so to speak, of our mind. And so, what we do when we come together is we start from where we're perceiving the problem, <coughs> up here on the top of the World Trade Center, or on the screen of the world. You know, I've got a problem with this person. They bug me. This is what bugs me about them, you know. You start from describing the problem as you perceive it, and then you start tracing it back into concepts and beliefs that are in the mind the floors of the World Trade Center that are really the cause of the problem. Because all those dark floors sprung from the ego, and, and those are all just false beliefs. So that's kind of a, a, an overview of the metaphysics of the Course. And everything we go into, ultimately, will start up there on the, on the roof of the World Trade Center where the flag is blowing. We're not, we won't just come here and we won't say, okay, God is love, I am the Christ. That's it, let's go. <laughs> because most people don't have that in their experience. I mean, they, they perceive themselves as, as being impinged upon by this world every day and, and constantly just trying to keep their heads above water, emotionally, financially, you know, that's been the, the whole thing. One more thing, too, I guess 
basic way of talking about the ego belief system is that that when the mind is now identified with this little speck on the screen, it, it seems as if the world has caused it. In other words, what's the origin of a person? You know, when you ask that question, you know, where are you from? Okay, where was I born? Oh, we're getting down now. My parents are my origin. You see, that, that the mind that believes it's in a body, or it's a body, believes that its origin is on the screen as well, that it was born from these two parents. So, you know, you hear the thing a lot of times teenagers or people that have gone through a lot of problems, I didn't ask to come here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot of times with teenagers and parents, like, I didn't ask to be born, you know. Kind of, and that's, once again, that's just a mild form of the same thing that, that I didn't ask for this, you know. I don't want a life like this. I do not like these things happening to me all the time. You know, I want, I want it to be different than it is. And basically, the, the cause of everything, whether we believe it's the economics, or the IRS, or our husbands and wives, or, or it's the, you know, genetics, sometimes it's like, oh great, I inherited a, a heart condition that's been in the family for four <laughs> generations. You know, I didn't ask for this, God. I mean, why, why does my best friend you know, perfectly healthy, good cholesterol level, good shape, and I've got a, a heart condition that I inherited. You can see how it's still something on the screen, including genetics, including the family tree that seems to be on the screen. You know, or um, maybe you've got early childhood experiences. Early childhood experiences. You know, I, I was, I would have been great, but I was traumatized. I was sexually <laughs> abused when I was three years old. You know. And so you go to therapy and you try to get in touch with all these memories of what happened. And it's still, the underlying premise is, it's something that happened to me. Some event out here on the screen is the cause of my life being in shambles. A lot of psychotherapy tries to trace it back and get in touch with these memories, you know. And what the Course is saying is, it's not the memories that are the cause of our trauma, but it's the interpretation in this very instant that we're giving in the present that is causing the trauma to our mind. And where's this interpretation coming from? It's, it's the mind is still calling forth these memories from the vault of the past and trying to... Jesus says it's over. In the holy instant, we are guiltless and innocent right now. And the mind's going, oh no, I'm afraid of that. Keeps calling the past into the present. You know, keeps bringing memories and, and problems and keeping things complicated because it's too terrified of the Holy Instant. It's too terrified of, of the Holy Spirit. So that gives us a real good insight into starting to look at our life and all the problems that we think we have on the screen and, and Jesus saying, okay now, now we'll trace it back into the mind and you can have some release. David, does traditional psychotherapy have a, have a rational place in the order of things? Um, Jesus dictated a, a pamphlet, after he dictated the Course, he dictated a pamphlet called um, Psychotherapy, Purpose, Process, and Practice. And Jesus actually does touch on psychologists in the Course a little bit, but he really goes into it here. And basically he says that most of the training for most psychotherapists in this world is a hindrance rather than a help. In other words, when I was studying psychology in undergraduate and graduate school, that a lot of the training I learned was very directive. And behavior modification, for example, behavior modification operates from the assumption that if you can use conditioning and reward and, and modify your behavior, that you can improve your life. And the Course is saying the problem is in your thinking, that your behavior comes automatically from your thinking, and that if you change the behavior without or, you know, like an alcohol, Alcoholics Anonymous, they call them dry drunk sometimes, where, you know, you, you try to change the behavior, but you don't really start opening up and processing and going within, that, that in that sense, you, don't, you aren't really making the change at all. You probably have other symptoms that will spring up. You're just shifting. You're just shifting the form. The thing about the Course is, is that it goes very, very deep. In other words, it, the Course goes into the metaphysics of time which is at the, really at the root of all problems. And, and that's pretty deep. And I mean, there's been a lot of psychotherapies that have kind of gotten into the beliefs, started to get into beliefs, 
lack of the World Trade Center, but the course kind of goes, we have a